Hello everyone. My name is Akesh Kapta and I'm with Lightspeed Solutions. In this presentation, I will share with you the new and improved integrated development environment of Ironspeed Designer. To begin with, let's start Ironspeed Designer. And within the Ironspeed Designer, we will open up an existing project. Of course, if you were to start a new project, things are a little bit different, which can be watched in another video. But when you open up an existing application or go through the first wizard in RSP Designer, RSP Designer brings you to the new IDE. For most part, the new IDE has a lot of uh, resemblance with the older version, just in case you have been using the older versions, but they definitely have been put together in a more standard format. To begin with, the whole application has a very similar menu structure like a file where all the standard file operations are, edit where all the standard edit operations are. In the view, this is where you might see some changes. This allows, the view menu allows you to hide and show various sections depending on your preference. Some people with uh, bigger monitors would like to have few things open at all times. Some would not uh, like that. Some wants more real estate. So in the view section, you can specify whether you want to see the application explorer, whether you want to see the toolbox, whether you want to see properties, whether you want to see output. So you can open multiple windows and you can drag and drop these windows anywhere you want, just like uh, you will be able to do it in Visual Studio. So as far as uh, the visibility of different sections of the application, it allows for a very flexible environment. Under the view menu, you also have, in case you want to now go and look at the files and you say, or display me all the files or only display me the safe source files. The difference here is that if you display the safe source files, it's easy not to make a mistake. But if you want to look at the entire code structure, you can definitely display all the source file. Some folks are used to working with line numbers when they look at their source code files. Some people would like to jump uh, to the database fields when they look at their visibility. They want them to be coming in alphabetical order or the order in which they are stored in the database. So at any given time, you have a choice to toggle between one of the three areas. You can be in the database view, the layout editor view, or the live preview view. Since in a typical application development phase, any user who is uh, involved with RNSP Designer will need to constantly toggle between the three views. RNSP has allowed us to now do that very quickly from the ribbon bar. So the ribbon bar has become less cluttered by only showing us the icons which are more commonly used in everyday development and all the options have really been moved over to the menus so that people can make the decisions when needed. The toolbar has been also updated to group every single thing which has to do with the configuration, whether it's an application configuration, security visit configuration, the batch master visit configuration. So if you really think about it, there were some configuration panels, uh, some settings. They're all now included in the tool menu, whether you want to configure the menu and, uh, you know, the email server. So previous to this uh, version, they were scattered a little bit here and there. They were still very usable, but they were scattered a bit. Now they have been grouped together. The most important option we see here is the ability for users to synchronize their database schema. As the users make changes to the database schema, RSP needs to be in constant sync with the database. And this is a very commonly used menu choice, which people will be coming here very often. The reason this didn't probably make it to the menu tab is because this only ha happens whenever the database schema changes, but during the application development stage, for most part, people do not really go back and forth that frequently once the database design is made. So this is one thing which definitely a lot of you will be using, how you want to do the scan only, synchronize it, and whether you want to accept only changes for single table. The build menu has now been kind of like uh, just have a new option where you are allowed to now build a single page, a current page. This is where I would like to show you. That's a new feature where you are allowed to only build a current page. 
this way you don't have to build the entire application build option usually goes through all the pages that have changed and rebuild goes through all the pages so that's why if you just want to do a quickly build the page that we are one page that you're working on you can just build that one page build uh, option builds you all the change or updated pages and rebuild will build every single thing if you want to run the application f5 if you want to run the current page where you are on you can run control f5 other options where you want to integrate with IIS or you want to run the development environment and other choices are almost the same with the help of course the same thing uh, there's actually a new feature which I will talk about the code docs code docs has now been basically moved to the help menu as compared to uh, in the application Explorer so that's a bit of a change which we will discuss when the like uh, just in a few minutes so once you're in the application Explorer RSP designer based on the tables and the entities that you have picked from the database brings in and generates the pages on whatever pages you have decided to build. For each page and for each section of the page, you have fields and other variables, and system will show you its properties in the property section. In addition, depending on how the system was configured, which is something I want to point out here. Sometimes you might notice that there are some tabs at the bottom formula, cell editor, data sources, and code, but it doesn't seem like anything is happening. To make it uh, make them appear, the code, you really have to go in and just bring the section up a little bit because depending on the different configuration, as people have different uh, uh, monitor resolutions, sometimes you might notice that the tabs are there but nothing is shown. It is not because it's not there. It is because RSP Designer IDE remembers the size of the different sections. And when you open it on a smaller monitor, sometimes they may not appear appropriately. So once again, just if you can see my icon here, you can just click on it and drag it up to see the section. Depending on which section you have clicked on, some, some details, I apologize, I just clicked on a wrong uh, menu here. Let me close it. So depending on uh, which section you have clicked on, the tabs may show you something or may not show you something. It all depends on uh, which field is clicked or which section is clicked. So this tab, these tabs operate. Some of some some of these tabs operate in a context sensitive manner. Another major change is that in the past, when a page is viewed at, uh, by someone, the page is divided into different sections just to even show you an application. So let's say, for example, this was the application. I'm going to quickly build it, run it. When people look at a page on the output side, it looks uh, like, okay, a data came in. But in reality, the page has been, is consists of many different sections. We have the header section. We have the menu section. We have the uh, table control. Within a table control, you have a title. So this area customer is a title. Then you have the action buttons. You have your filter filter buttons. You have your search area. Then you have the fields area, whichever fields you want to work with. And then at the bottom, you have the pagination going on and the footer. So you can see there are many different sections of a page. And within IDE environment, when you open up a different page section, system shows you that every single thing starts from a master page and there's a a page, a show customer table page, and within a page you have different sections. One of the best things RSP did so far, in my opinion, is that now when you hover upon any of these sections, they give you a little bit of a, a hint as to which section you're looking at relative to a page. This allows users to visualize and go directly to the section they need. So if somebody wants to alter the, uh, the search section, of a page, they can just go to action search. Of course, just by looking at the naming convention, it sometimes is also easier uh, to basically understand. But in case you need visual, it definitely helps you a lot by seeing which section of the page you want to alter. And once you click on it, system will open up the controls only for that section. So this way, toggling between sections with some preview really comes in handy. In the past versions, the sections were also named exactly with the kind of a fully qualified name. So if you're on a customer, it might say customer search and so on. So by the time you have a, a many different sections of the page, 
it sometimes becomes very overwhelming. So by narrowing down the sections by their generic name under a common or under their parent name, it makes it easy for people to navigate. If you're looking to open up uh, the files, of course, uh, you can expand the folder, folder of the, uh, not the folder, but the file. File has a code behind code. That is where you will basically see your code that's generated and you can extend it. As you normal, uh, you know, you have two sections. One is section one and the section two. If you notice, I'm seeing the line numbers just because I turned that line number viewing option on. So that helps me see uh, where things are. So try to stay away from writing or overwriting anything in section number two because every single time you rebuild the application, section number two or section two changes will be lost. So highly recommended only stick with your changes in section one. Section one changes are not lost. As far as uh, talking about code docs, if you basically um, go to the help menu, there's something called as code docs. Code docs was the was available in the older version on every single page. This is something which uh, some of uh, us loved it and some of us were more confused, especially onboarding a new user where they were overwhelmed. So one of the things RN Speed has done in this release is that they moved the code docs under help because it really relates to helping you with your custom page. So if you have a page that you want to know various options which are available because when you look in the code behind the option shows you what code behind are in use but there may be some code behind uh, possibilities which are not in use so in order to see them you can click on a page go to help go to code docs and click on your application code documentation the system is going to take your app your entity or your page or which you are working on and show you the code documentation for that particular page. Any section that has been listed with a red check mark right here really means it's already included in your code behind. If it is not, then basically it will not have a checkbox, but allows you to copy and paste the code right from here into your code behind files. So it allows you to see what are the possibilities or what are the various methods which are available and properties. And it gives you a head start on using the tool in a better capacity. Other than that, uh, of course, everybody knows that you can undo, redo. This is another very, very powerful stuff that if you have moved some fields around, written some code, you can just click on undo. One of the best things about undo and redo is even if you have moved on to another page and then come back, the undo and redo still holds true. Undo and redo will work as long as you have not closed RNSP Designer. The moment you close RNSP Designer, all the changes uh, of undo and redo are lost in the sense that they do not have any memory of what to go back. So it's highly recommended that uh, you save your work as frequently, but uh, once you close the RNSP Designer, be aware that undo and redo will be uh, will not work the way they work uh, before closing. If you want to open up the project in Visual Studio, just within the page, if your Visual Studio is installed and also based on the .NET version which you're using, you can click on Visual Studio icon. System will automatically open up your Visual Studio project and go back to exactly the page which you're working on. A lot of times when you make changes, so say for example, I basically make a changes. If I basically write some code and I save the code and come back from Visual Studio, you will notice that RNSpeed will all automatically sense that the code was changed and it will prompt you that the source code was modified outside of the RNSpeed designer. Would you like to reload it? To that, I would highly recommend click on yes. For the users who sometimes do not feel comfortable or uh, are not used to working in with the same source code file in two different applications, my recommendation is to close RNSpeed Designer, open up Visual Studio, work on a project, and so on. This way you can get some experience. So based on what I've shared with you, of course, uh, this is a regular, uh, like a very brief overview of some of the things which have changed. Hopefully you folks uh, enjoyed this video. Keep watching for more. And uh, if you have any questions, don't forget the Iron Speed Forum. Thanks for watching.